Welcome to Fenway Park on this very special Patriots Day. A look at Lansdowne Street as the fans make their way in for Game 4 of the series between the O's and the Red Sox. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo along with Jerry Remy. Welcome to Red Sox Baseball. Well, last year the Red Sox had tons of come-from-behind victories. The Red Sox last night got down in the game 5 to nothing. Johnny Gomes got him right back in it again. Well, you know, Don, it seems like every time Gomes is in the lineup, uh, something good happens, whether it's drawing a big walk in the ball game or in the case of last night getting a big home run. The Red Sox were down in this game. It looked like it was going to be another loss, but the three-run home run by Gomes gets them back into the ball game and makes it a game and gives them a chance to go on later on to win the ball game. So, you know, it, it's interesting. You know, Farrell loves his energy that he brings to the lineup, and that's one of the reasons that he puts him in there quite often. You've hit him, you've hit him in different spots. He's been in the leadoff spot. He is in the lineup again today. Not the leadoff spot, but in the middle of the lineup. And every time he's in there, it seems like something positive happens, whether it be a good catch in the field, a clutch base hit, a clutch walk, or a clutch home run like last night. Well, the Red Sox today will try to win the series as they send Clay Buckholz to the mound for Clay, trying to get his first victory of the year as he comes in at 0-1 with an ERA over 5, but the numbers have been fantastic in his career against Baltimore, 9-3 and with a 3.40 ERA. We're back with the first pitch from Fenway right after this. It is morning baseball. The Red Sox and the Baltimore Orioles wrapping up this series. Before we get it started, let's send it down. Third member of our broadcast team, Gary Streisky. Don, so it's just been a couple of days since the Brock Holt call up and John Farrell was saying he brought him in to kind of spark the bottom third of that lineup, but he's doing such a good job and he's impressed the coaching staff so much that, well, he's batting leadoff and Brock Holt says that's actually a position that he's more comfortable with. He usually bats either first or in the two hole down in Pawtucket. I asked him about it in our Geico quote of the day. I'm excited to be there. Um, you know, coming up to the minor leagues, I've always been um, lead off two hole. Um, you know, but just excited to see my name in the lineup anywhere. So uh, to see it, see it up at the top, you know, hopefully I can provide uh, a little bit. You know, get on base for for the guys behind me. Now Brock Holt leading off today for the Red Sox and a quick turnaround for a lot of the Red Sox today after last night's late night game and some even slept here at Fenway Park as it turns out to uh, today's starter Clay Buckholtz one of them John Lackey and Mike Napoli who uh, was injured in last night's game they all stayed over and just <laughs> slept here at Fenway Park with a quick turnaround and morning game after the night game here at Fenway last night and Buckholtz getting ready and it is a welcome sight to see Mike Napoli back in the Red Sox starting lineup Jerry after being hit 
in the kneecap last night. He's had a rough week, hasn't he? He had those fingers damaged in the uh, series uh, uh, on the last road trip. Uh, was back in the lineup after one day. And then, of course, last night being hit by the pitch. And he's so valuable to that Red Sox lineup. Uh, the middle of that lineup where the power comes from. Look back at last night and that submarine style delivery getting him right off the kneecap and down he goes. And you know, when you see something like that, you say, well, maybe two or three days, but uh, not the case with Mike Napoli. Well, I thought we'd say the same thing with the dislocated finger last week, too, as he was back uh, a day later and now back in the lineup today. I'm sure it is sore, however, as Napoli gets to start today defensively at first base. Well, it is. Picture perfect here today for this morning game with blue skies above Fenway Park. 58 degrees as we get it started. Breeze out to center field at 8 miles per hour. And the forecast is for more sunshine as the day goes on. So today is uh, terrific here. Uh, baseball conditions, very, very nice. And, of course, the Boston Strong jersey back in the Red Sox dugout on this marathon Monday in Boston. And Jerry, as you mentioned, I heard you in the uh, pregame show, certainly a little different driving in today on this Patriots day yeah. than it has been in the past. It really was, you know, because I've been making this trip for so many years, and you, you drive into the ballpark and on the other way going, heading west to the all the runners on their buses, and you think about it, well, they're going out to run a marathon, you know, and and then all of a sudden it's a totally different feeling today after what happened last year, and, and there's so much excitement in the city of Boston today that it's just a fantastic feeling. Well, the Red Sox take the field, and as they do, let's check out the visiting Baltimore Orioles starting nine. Nick Markakis leading it off. He is the DH today, with Nelson Cruz taking his spot in right field, batting second with Chris Davis at first base. Adam Jones in center field. Steve Clevenger does the catching today with Jonathan Scope at third base. Main native Ryan Flaherty is at shortstop batting seventh with Steve Lombardozzi at second base batting eighth. And David Lowe made a very costly error in last night's game back in left field. He bats ninth. Today's Red Sox starting pitcher is presented by your New England Audi dealers. Experience the all-new 2015 Audi A3 today. For Buck Holtz, his fourth start of the year, still looking for his first victory of the year as he comes in at 0-1 with a 5.51 earned run average, 15 strikeouts to two walks, and opponents are hitting at 351 against Buck Holtz. Good numbers, though, against the Orioles, and he's hoping for more of the same today. 9-3 and three with a 3.40 earned run average. Opponents hitting a 234 for him against the Orioles. Now the Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, and they are eighth in the American League with 12 errors in 19 games. Brock Holt will be at third base, and Bogarts the shortstop, Dustin Pedroia at second, and Mike Napoli over at first base. Left to right, Johnny Gomes. Jackie Bradley Jr. and Daniel Nava and David Ross getting the start behind the plate catching Clay Buckholz. Well, the umpiring crew today, Will Little has the plate calling the balls and strikes with Paul Schreiber at first base, Mark Carlson the umpire at second, and the crew chief Ted Barrett is the umpire at third. Well, the game is available in Spanish today. The SAP function is brought to you by the new Captain Morgan White Rum. Buenos dias, uh, amigos. Well, the Red Sox coming from behind last night at one point trailing five to nothing. And John Farrell's team who came from behind so many times last year doing it here last night enjoying their first walk-off victory of the year. And uh, would like to win this series. A chance to do that here today. Boston 9-10 and 10 and a chance to get back to the 500 mark. Still just two games back of the New York Yankees who have 11 wins so far this season. Now, Nick Marquegas ready to dig in here on the left side as Clay Buckholz in behind the mound getting ready. Marquegas sitting at 278. No homers and four runs batted in. Orioles will head to Toronto after the game today to begin a three game series with the Jays beginning tomorrow night. Buckholz ready to work, and the first pitch of the game on this Patriots Day from Fenway Park is going to miss for ball one. Seems strange, Don, that we're not heading on the road somewhere. Yes. It usually works that way when mm -hmm. we do this game and then head out to some city in the American League. We get to stay home, and we get to play the Yankees over the next three nights. Of course, last year the team headed to Cleveland. This is on the ground right side. Pedroia stepped to his left, throws out Marquecas. 
Now, Buck Coles has got better and better with each start that he has made. That first start against Milwaukee, giving up 13 hits and six runs. Against the Yankees, six innings, giving up uh, two earned runs. And last time out, against the White Sox, six innings and two earned runs. That was the walk game. That was the 15 walks issued by the Chicago White Sox in that game. One down for Nelson Cruz, who plays in right field today and just gets out of the way of that pitch. Thomas Cruz saw the bulk of his time in the Texas Rangers right field area. And with Marquez here every day, he gets the start there today with Marquez being used in the DH capacity. Buck Schulter's been on the field a lot in this series. We've seen a lot of Buck during this series and uh, some challenges, some things that should have been challenged perhaps that were not, things that can't be challenged. There are all kinds of things going on in this series, and even last night. The 2-0 pitch to Cruz is in there for a strike, and it's 2-1. On now, to me, that play last night at second base, I mean, that, that has to be an out. Right. It's on the transfer. There's no doubt about it. There's no question about that. Two one pitch is going to miss inside and is very different from what is known as the neighborhood play around the bag at second. And they yeah, you know that, that more than anybody. I think that's what people make the mistake. The neighborhood play is when you get your foot somewhere around the bag, you know, and you're trying to get out of dodge before that guy comes in and slides. It's it's not a question of when how long you hold the ball. That has nothing to do with the neighborhood play. Three one pitch is a swing and a miss and a full count. I mean, part of the idea of being a second baseman and shortstop is getting rid of the ball quick, and there's no question last night they had that ball long enough. Swing and a foul tip held on to by David Ross. First strikeout of the day for Clay Buckles. Now Buckles, good cut fastball going down and away from Cruz, who has had good success in his career against Buckholz, but Clay winning that battle. Red Sox going to the shift here on Chris Davis, says Dustin Pedroia. Ducks back to short right field. And it is Brock Holt, third baseman, coming to the right side of the infield. He's in the second base spot as Davis, who compiled 53 home runs a year ago, has won so far this season, toting a 241 average. And he'll take ball one, kind of framed by David Ross. Some tight games for the Orioles, 10 of their first 17 games. Uh, been sided by one run. 1-0 pitch inside, and it's 2-0. and Orioles playing very well defensively coming into the series. They've made just three errors coming into the series, but four in the series, and now have seven on the year. A more costly than last night's throwing error from left field. It was uncorked that allowed Pedroia to score and the Red Sox to win last night. Three O pitch coming to Chris Davis. And a four pitch walk. Buckholz thought he had the corner, but it is ball four. Final play we we're talking about last night on a liner to left that was going to be the second out, and Pedroia was bluffing to draw the throw. Well, you never know. You draw that throw, and this could happen. It's exactly what happened. He said after the game did low that he was trying to hit the cutoff man. He didn't hit the cutoff man, nor did he hit any of the backup men. And the cutoff man just let the ball go. So Pedroia was able to go back and still plenty of time to score, and the Red Sox win. Adam Jones hitting at 313 on the year. Homer eight runs batted in to go along with that over 300 average. Jones seven for 13 in the series with a couple of doubles, couple runs scored, and a couple runs driven in.
That's a strike in. It's one and one. It's a seen fastball that time from Buckles right down about knee high. You can see Ross setting up outside and that ball tails back a little bit toward the outside corner. Joseph Abood had the chance to visit with him up in the booth a little while ago. He brought Jerry some new ties. Yeah, so I got a new rotation of ties to go through. He looked at our uh, shoes today and he said, what are you doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those are not Abood sneakers. To left field, Johnny Gomes moving over on the run. He dives and makes the catch. Johnny Gomes laying it out in left center field ends the top of the first. Red Sox are coming up. The first inning, Red Sox coming up in the bottom of the first inning as we check out the Red Sox starting nine. Brock Holt leading it off for the first time. He's at third base with Dustin Pedroia batting second. David Ortiz, the DH bats third with Mike Napoli back in there today at first base in the cleanup spot. Johnny Gomes with a nice defensive play in left field is in left. Xander Bogarts at shortstop bat sixth. Daniel Nava in right field with David Ross doing the catching today. After we saw Pierzynski last night and Jackie Bradley Jr. in center field, bats ninth. Wayne Chen on the mound today for the O's. Fourth start of the year comes in at 2 and 1 with a 4.76 earned run average. 12 Ks to two walks. Opponents hitting at 351 and he is under 500 individually against Boston at eight starts, two and three with a 5.24 earned run average. Rockhold standing in. And he takes strike one. Old four for ten since returning to Boston. And 400. And with two runs batted in for the Red Sox third baseman. Quickly down 0 and 2. Second time they have faced Chen this season. Uh, he picked up the loss. Going five and two thirds giving up 12 hits and four runs in his first outing this year against Boston. Since then, he's got wins against the uh, New York Yankees and Tampa Bay Rays. Brock Holt getting a hit here last night, going one for three with a walk. The time of his recall to Boston, he's hitting at 380, which was good for the fourth highest average in the International League. A 
have been 0 2 now, full count. Everything away from hole two in uh, this at bat, with the exception of the first pitch of the ball game. Sharply hit on the ground to Lombardozzi at second base, who throws him out for the first out here in the bottom of the first inning. Now let's look at the Oriole defense. They have fourth in the league with seven errors in 17 games. Jonathan Scope at third base, Ryan Flaherty the shortstop, Steve Lombardozzi at second, and Chris Davis the first baseman. Left to right, David Lowe, Adam Jones, and Nelson Cruz. And Steve Clevenger gets to start behind the plate. Catching Wayne Chin. One down for Dustin Pedroia, hitting at 260, no homers and two runs batted in. He scored the game winning run last night from third base. Pedroia, five for 12 in the series against Baltimore. Well, today's key matchup is brought to you by Honda. Start something special with a great deal on a Honda. Dustin Pedroia with very good success against Wei Yin Chen. 11 for 22. Four doubles, a triple, and four runs batted in. It'll bounce in, and it's two and one. Kevin Millar in the house today. His normal spot right by the Red Sox dugout. Swing and a miss. Bat goes flying towards Scope at third base. Pedroia losing the handle on that all the way out to third. And Dustin fooled on the changeup that time by Chan and uh, just loses control of the bat. Sends it out toward Jonathan Scope at third base. Scope a little fancy footwork to get out of the way of that bat. As it rolls uh, just about to the outfield. Full count now for Pedroia with David Ortiz waiting on deck. One out here in the first inning. On the ground, left side. Flaherty to his right. Throws out Pedroia for the second out of the inning. Baseball is back in season, so gather 20 or more of your friends, family, and coworkers for a group outing at Fenway and secure exclusive access to seats. Call 877-RED-SOX-9 or visit redsox.com slash groups for more information. A great crowd on hand here today as there was last night. And two down here in the bottom of the first inning for David Ortiz. 254, three homers and 10 runs batted in for David. Four for eight in the series with a home run, couple of RBIs. Shifting on the right side here against David Ortiz per usual. Now tied with Mike Napoli for the most home runs on the team with three. After hitting a solo shot on Saturday. And Ortiz will take the walk down to first base. A four pitch walk at that. First base runner of the day for Boston. So Ortiz to first, two down. Mike Napoli coming up, and of course Mike was hit off the kneecap last night, but back in there today, a 279 hitter, three homers, and 10 runs batted in for Napoli. He is two for 12 in the series against Baltimore. Last night being struck right on the kneecap. Looked bad initially, but he stayed in the game and ran the bases.
Back in there again today. And batting in with two down and big poppy at first base. Popped up foul back and out of play. On Saturday he picked up an RBI becoming the first Red Sox player to reach double digits in RBIs. Also tied for the most multi hit games on the club. He's got five tied with Grady Sizemore and Dustin Pedroia in that category. Another foul back, and it's one and two now to Napoli. Oh, now Napoli goes into his uh, two strike approach a little bit different this year as he's tried to cut down on his swing a little bit with two strikes. He he still has the kind of power that can drive the ball out of the ballpark to the opposite field or center field. Well, a fastball, and they want it upstairs. As a guy who sees over four pitches per plate appearance, ranking second among active big leaguers in that category, 4.33 pitches seen per plate appearance. Second only to Jason Worth, who sees 4.41. On the ground left side, Flaherty at shortstop will go to second base for the force out that ends the inning. We will step aside and get a look at some special footwear when we return to Fenway. Special day here at Fenway Park, Gary Streisky. It certainly is, Don, and uh, you know, it's probably hard to argue that a ticket to Fenway Park isn't the hottest ticket in the town, except for maybe today, of course, with the Boston Marathon running right now. 36,000 participants, of course, we can't be there, but in a sign of solidarity, that's when we decided to lace up our kicks and show a sign of solidarity here by going with the sneaker look. Today, I went with blue. It kind of matches the tie. I know, Don, Jerry, you guys have your sneakers on if Mr. Abood is watching. Hopefully, that offers up a little bit of clarity, even our folks behind the scenes, director Mike Narachi, producer Jim Dodonna, they all have their sneakers on. So, of course, since we can't be out there on the marathon route, certainly with the runners today in spirit. That is exactly the case. And, uh, Jerry, a little different lacing up the sneakers today with the suit. I will say it is a different look. Uh, nice and comfortable. I yeah, really am. Very comfortable. My, my knee feels good. My toe feels good. Thank the people over at New Balance for supply, I guess. Yes, with, uh, as always, the New Balance sneakers, people. Yeah. Don, Don and uh, Don, your white ones that look like they've been through. Uh, they've been through a little bit. Yeah, yep. some yep. yard work. Those are my uh, backup pair that I wear like during the winter when it is like nasty out. Uh huh. And you don't want to ruin like your good running shoes. Right. You wear those because they're the backup. Right. So I got sort of dressed in the dark this morning and I pulled those out, and that's why I went with them. But uh, yes, those are not my starters. 
by New Balance starters. These are the backup New Balance running sneakers. You're right. Joseph Boot kind of did look at us kind of strangely when he walked into the booth. <laughs> Clevenger grounds one right side. Pedroy on a couple of hops. Throws him out for the first out of the second inning. Well, the list today, top brands of running shoes. You can add your thoughts at hashtag Nesson List. I figured I'd go with the blue New Balance today because uh, I have the kind of a bluish yeah, slate blends. type uh, the sport coat on. You match. I yeah. Mean, I, I completely stick out. This one fouled off to the right out of play, although I will say, getting from the car into the booth area, very comfortable walk. A I'm bounce thinking, in my I'm step. and Thinking about going with this look all the time. It, it's not bad. No. Especially if you can match it the way you match it. Well, we need more shoes. Well, that's... That, yeah. <laughs> Our good friends at New Balance. This is on the ground up the middle, ranging his Bogarts. His throw going to be close, but it is just in time. Nice to done to get scoped. The one problem I had, Jerry, was what sock to wear with it, though. Yeah, I feel uncomfortable with the dark sock. Uh, I really do, but uh, yeah. looks. I, I felt like going with the white ones, you know. The, so that's what I was going to do, like two yeah. socks, like you're going to yeah. go running. Yeah, but but I went with the blue. This is probably such a, the most casual game we've ever done. I think so. Yeah. Very comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so there are two outs. I'm going to run home. <laughs> Ryan Flaherty will take a pitch for a strike over the outside corner. This one is fouled off. So relaxed, I can't see where it went. Hello, cut fastball that time, Don. That uh, <laughs> was fouled off. You know, the thing about this is that you really could do the whole game off the monitor. And if that's the case, we don't even need to come to Fenway Park. We could do the games from home. I mean, because I can't see the field from where we are right now. Can you? Uh, no. <laughs> Doesn't matter, though. <laughs> no. It's a casual thing. Plus, we're seeing what the fan at home sees by looking at the TV. Nice little change up right there and back uh, to Buckholz underhanded to end yep. the inning. Very nice. Nice inning. One, two, three inning with three ground ball outs. Scoreless from Fenway. As the Red Sox have Johnny Gomes, Andrew Bogarts, and Daniel Nava coming up here in the bottom of the second inning. Nice win yesterday for the Boston Bruins. Game two of their series. They bounce back after a loss in the first game against the Red Wings. 
Nice catch by Johnny Gomes earlier in the game, and here he is to bat for the first time today. Gomes at 225, two homers and six runs batted in. Mentioned the three run home run for him last night in the sixth inning. It's his second round tripper of the year. Red Sox are trailing 5 0 at the time, helping overcome a five run deficit for the win. From last night for Johnny Gomes as got the Red Sox back within two off Ubaldo Jimenez. And the comeback was on last night for Boston before their 6 5 win. First walk off win of the year, of course, they had 11 last year. Baldo Jimenez, one of the newcomers to the O's, got the start last night, his second against Boston. Orioles pitching with a 3.92 earned run average as a staff. They're in the middle of the league. There's a strike and a full count now. Red Sox fourth and earn run average as staff 3.52 the Oakland A's the only team in the twos they have a 2.48 ERA. Holmes fouls it back and this a battle see a seventh pitch. Well today following the game check out dining playbook with Billy Costa and Jenny Johnson for the show that combines New England's love of the game with its passion for food. This week's episode features the best marathon route restaurants. Marathon training with an Olympian and Patriots great Teddy Bruschi. Dining playbook today at three. Holmes fouling off another. Speaking of dining uh, yesterday I was out. Uh, we had a nice brunch. I had a nice group of about eight people having brunch and at this place, uh, I believe it was at Franklin, if I'm not mistaken. And just to show how close we all are here at Nesson, Adam Pellerin was there. Really? And he walked right by me and didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Gump strikes out for the first out of the second inning. Now, did he make eye contact with you and then decide to blow you off, or was it just kind of he didn't see you at all, you think? I, I, I hope he didn't see me. Mm -hmm. I, I really hope he didn't see me, but uh, he just. He was with a large group of people also. Okay. And, uh, I looked and I said, oh, there's Adam Pellerin, you know. And then by the time I said, oh, there's Adam Pellerin, he was. Right. Maybe he'd rather not speak to you. Maybe not. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's a lot of people that don't want to speak to me. Sander Bogart standing in and taking strike one. Jerry, I just want you to know from down here, I would have certainly stopped, said hi. I would have probably offered to buy your meal, actually, as a matter of fact. Wow. Oh, that's okay. I would have taken care of you, Gary. We're well, cool like that. We're cool like that. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this. The booted love this. <laughs> he looked terrific. What's going on with that, right? He's also a booted. Like, ah, I dress these guys. Really? Awful. You know, you can dress them up, but, you know, still. On the wrong... <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. They're both awful. Had a couple of wet requests for him today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you dropped on him no slim fit shirts. No slim fit shirts. <laughs> In the air to shallow left. Back goes Flaherty. In comes low. And he'll make the catch for the second out of the second inning. And and I don't I don't want I have these um, what do they call them? Cufflinks. Cufflinks. You don't like them. Well I don't have I got one pair of cufflinks and I got about three shirts that need cufflinks. And I these well, a very nice cufflinks. They were given me for the All Century team, mm -hmm. but I didn't know I had them. My wife found them, and uh, so I do have cufflinks to wear with these shirts. But I requested that we just get the regular shirts without right. the cufflinks. And, and no slim fit because no, your no, kitchen not, is an not, issue. Not, well, we're not, I'm not 30 years old anymore. Right. I mean, you you know, don't want to be slim fit. Slim fit, like the front comes out all the time. Mm -hmm. And you're so, boiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The cufflinks are very nice. They are, yeah. uh, see, very nice. They all century team. Yep, very very nice. But I mean, I can't, I, I can't be traveling cufflinks. Yeah. 
Daniel Nav is eight for 63 so far this season and batting with two outs here in the second inning. You think that collar got trapped in your seatbelt on the way in or something? Because it's, it's back up again. Is it really? Yeah. It's a <laughs> Nava with a swing and a miss strikes out. That is the second K for Wei and Chen. Red Sox down in order. Scoreless from Fenway. We'll get to the Wally Wave when we come back. Of the third inning. Then we got the Wally wave again here today, Jerry. This thing is really picking up steam. We've yeah. seen it a couple days in a row now. Wally is adding to his entourage as well. Yeah, I see it spread. Kids really getting into it, that's for sure. That's the third inning, and it's tap foul here by. Steve Lombardozzi leading it off for the O's. David Lowe, then Nick Marcakis expected in the third inning. Four in a row, retired by Clay Buckholt, fresh off a one, two, three, second inning. And Lombardozzi is relatively close to the plate from the left side, takes pitch over the inside corner. And on the grass at third is Holt. And the high strike call. Buckholz coming with that two seam fastball, bringing it back over the plate. Maybe a little bit high, but gets the benefit of the call. This one lined into center field, a ringing single for Lombardozzi. First hit of the day for the O's leads off the third inning. Gulf Electricity, they're powering Fenway Park and they can power your home too. Visit GulfElectricity.com today. Lead runner on here for the Orioles in the third inning. David Lowe, the batter. 135. No homers and three runs batted in. Lombardozzi at first base has one steal on the season, has not been caught. He'll 
get some attention from Clay Buckles. Lombardozzi gains that lead again, not as large as it once was. Now he's getting out there. And a ground ball, base hit into right field off the bat of David Lowe. Stopping at second base, Lombardozzi. And the first two have reached here on base hits. The eight, nine men for the Orioles getting it done here in the third. Now Lowe has to feel good about that base hit. Of course, it was his throw last night that gave the Red Sox a win. He gets the cut fastball that time from uh, Buck Holson. Finds that hole between first and second. Good charge put on by Daniel Nava, and that's going to hold that runner at second base. But the Orioles have something going with the bottom of the batting order. Now back to the top with Marquegas. Two on, nobody out. Nick Marquegas, 0 for 1. Grounded out to second base in the first inning. Clay Buckles is no hitter against the Orioles in the final out. The no hitter it was a curveball to Nick Marquegas as he struck out to end the no hitter here at Fenway. Little drop in there for strike one. That's the curveball you were talking about there, Don. A pretty good curveball from Buckles. I, I noticed last time out uh, that he had a much better curveball in that game on a very cold night uh, in Chicago. In the air, back at third on the run is Holt by the seats, and he won't have a play, but he goes into that first row. Just out of his reach. Yeah, that was a tough one because it was not hit that high, and Hole has to go full speed, really not knowing where that wall is. He never had a chance to take a peek at the wall. He's got his guys concentrated on the baseball and just off the top of the glove. So Marquez gets another chance here. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Up and away for ball two. Two and two. And Buckholz did not factor in the decision. Last time out, his third start of the year. That was at Chicago. Well, three runs, two earned, including a two-run home run. And six innings of work last time out. His loss was at New York against the Yankees. And this is to right field and in for a base hit. They're going to wave around Lombardozzi from second base. He'll score without a problem. To third goes low on the RBI single by Nick Marikakis. The Orioles strike first and take a one nothing lead on their third straight hit. Well, Marquez actually got jammed on this uh, cut fastball from Clay Buckholz, but he finds a, a good area out there beyond first base. There's the cut fastball inside, and it jams Marquez, but he muscles the ball out there to pick up the base hit and pick up the RBI. Marquez, who has not had a lot of success in his career against Buckholz, uh, gets the job done there on a pretty tough pitch. Cut fastball right back in on the hands. First and third, nobody out. Nelson Cruz, the batter, he struck out swinging in the first inning, 0 for 1. Cruz, 5 for 14 in the series against Boston, including a home run. 
fact, all three of his home runs have come against the Red Sox, two in that first series in Baltimore and one in this series. He fouls it off down the third baseline. People always ask who has the advantage in this uh, day game. It's 11 o'clock start. And of course, last night after an ESPN a night game, I don't think anybody has the advantage <laughs> because I don't think either team, they're not accustomed to playing these 11 o'clock starts. This is back up the middle into center field. A base hit from third comes David Lowe. And the Orioles take a 2-0 lead. Nelson Cruz with an RBI single. And that's four straight hits now for Baltimore. Once again, it looks like it might be the cutter from Buck Olsen taken right back up the middle by Nelson Cruz. Now Cruz, on the other hand, has done very well against Buck Holtz. A 400 average with a home run. Buckholz got him to strike out back in the first inning, but this time up the middle with the base hit. Picks up his 13th RBI of the season. Well, the Chevy key player, Nelson Cruz, now 8 for 25. Updated 400 average against Clay Buckholz. He's at first. Marquegas at second. Still nobody out. Two runs in already. And Chris Davis walked back in the first inning. Well, the eight nine men kind of setting the table here for the Orioles in Lombardozzi and Lowe, both with singles, and now they both scored. On the ground, foul. Davis, all for ten in this series. He has walked three times and been hit by a pitch. 40th pitch for Clay Buckholz. And that'll bounce in. Two and two. Had not allowed a hit through the first two innings. Did walk a batter. There was Davis back in the first inning, but four straight hits, two runs later. And still nobody out here in the third inning. Uh, what he needs desperately here is a ground ball double play to get a couple of quick outs and try to minimize this damage. Bounced again, three and two. Adam Jones on deck. And a right center field in for a base hit. Marquez is being waved around. The throw from Jackie Bradley Jr. is off the mark. Another run in. As to third base goes Cruz on the RBI single by Chris Davis. And Baltimore jumps on top three to nothing. Five straight hits now for the Orioles. And that's going to bring Juan Yebez out of the Red Sox dugout. I think an errant throw there by Jackie Bradley Jr. He really had no chance at home plate. I think that the option for him would have been to go to third base and try to keep it a first and second situation, but he elects to go home and that allows the runner to move up to third base. It was really no play at home plate for him as a throw was way off target anyway. So first and third, nobody out. Three runs in here for Baltimore and Adam Jones coming up. Jones lined out to the left fielder Johnny Gomes. I made a diving catch out in left center field. Back in the first inning, actually ended the first inning.
Chop foul for strike one. Once again, right there, Buckles trying to throw that turnover fastball, trying to induce a ground ball. Topping it is Adam Jones. Ball to strike now to Adam Jones. And a 20 pitch inning already for Buckholz, and he does not have an out yet. Facing a guy who's been very good in this situation, especially lately. And Jones will foul it off to the right out of play as Buckholz jumps ahead. Well, tomorrow night, the Bruins head to Detroit to take on the Red Wings in Game 3 of the Eastern Conference quarterfinals. They'll miss the one-hour pregame at 6.30 on Nesson with a 7.30 puck drop. While the Yankees' first visit to the Sox will begin at 6 on Nesson Plus. To find your Nesson Plus channels, visit Nesson.com slash Nesson Plus. Side for ball two, two and two. And John Lester against Masahiro Tanaka. We'll get to see him tomorrow night. Tanaka two and zero oh with a two point oh five earned run average in his start in the majors. Then Lackey and Pineda on Wednesday. Felix Dubron and CC Sabathia in a battle of lefties on Thursday in the finale of that series. Ground ball left side to short. Bogarts will go to second, and they get the out there, but a run scores, and the Orioles take a 4 0 lead. Adam Jones will pick up an RBI in the fielder's choice, and Baltimore scoring four times already in the inning. Ball not hit hard enough to uh, get a double play. Bogarts has to go a couple of steps to his right, as you can see right here, and by the time he gets that ball at second base, it's a very close play at second. Pedroia looks to first base, but to no, no chance for double play. On her first, we hit one out, and this is driven to right field and up over the head of Nava. Clevenger, the catcher, is coming around from first base. Is Adam Jones going to try and score? Throw to the plate will be not in time. And Baltimore scores five times here so far in the top half of the third inning off Clay Buckholz. Well, Buckholz just really breezed through the first couple of innings, and all of a sudden it's a hit after hit. Clevenger getting the start today behind the plate with the most recent, again, the cut fastball. It, it stays out too much out over the plate, and Clevenger hits it hard down that right field corner. Daniel Navar on his horse to try to make the play there, but has to chase it all the way to the wall. Second time here in the last two days, the Orioles have mounted a 5 0 lead. Once the Red Sox were able to come back from it last night. Merck Baden hop up in the pen here. This is the eighth member of the Orioles to bat against Clay Buckholz in the third inning. And six hits and five runs in the inning. It's 0 and 2. In the dirt, smothered by Ross. No advance for Clevenger at second base. Scope hits a foul fly down the right field line out of play. Which 
cheer on our marathon runners with free runner rally cards available at select Dunkin' Donuts locations along the marathon route. Thirtieth pitch of this inning coming up here for Clay Buckholtz. He has recorded one out. One two. Pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. Two and a third, six hits, five runs. All the hits, all the runs coming in this, the third inning. Walk in a K. Look out up over the head that time of Scope with a changeup. Yeah, Buck Holtz way off target uh, in this inning. A changeup that's uh, uh, not even close to the strike zone. Fortunately for Scope, it was a changeup. Gave him a chance to get out of the way. Checking on Baden Hop, who's been warming quickly in the pen. Scope gets into this and sends it to deep left field. This one is going to grab the base of the wall. Clevenger comes around to score the sixth Baltimore run. It's a wall ball single for Jonathan Scope, and it is a 6 0 Baltimore lead. And that'll be the day for Clay Buckholtz. So John Farrell to make the change here in what was. One of the more difficult innings we've ever seen Clay Buckholz have. Six nothing. Orioles have the lead. One out here in the third. Quickly in the third inning, this call to the bullpen is brought to you by your local New England Ford dealers. Burke Badenhop in here for the Red Sox in the third inning. Badenhop's eighth appearance, 0 and 2 with a 6.75 earned run average, five Ks to three walks. And they had an opponent sitting at 400 against Badenhop. It's kind of been the long man for the Red Sox and coming out of the pen in these situations so far this season. Hell, a last base hit for Clay Buckholz. Again, looks like he tries to break off a spinning uh, curveball and really not that bad a pitch. It was down and away, but some very, very good hitting there by Scope as he plants it off that left field wall, and that's going to run Clay for the game uh, very early now this afternoon. You know, Red Sox trying to piece this thing together now from the pen. Badenhop allowed a run on three hits and two innings pitched on Friday in game one of the series. Against Baltimore. In the seventh and eighth innings in that game. And here he is now facing Ryan Flaherty. Jonathan Scope at first base and one out. Check on Scope. Flaherty grounded back to the mound in the second inning. The 
Red Sox bullpen in 29 innings, giving up four runs, 1.24 ERA. They have been very good out of that bullpen. Down and in for ball two. Mark Vinhop spending last year as a member of the Milwaukee Brewers. On the ground towards short could be two to second for one on to first it is two much needed. An end to a miserable inning for the Red Sox as the Orioles score six times. Sox one for Sam Adams. Sox two for John Hancock. Sox three for George Washington. Sox four. How about this one? Tom Brady. No Mel Gibson, who actually played the Patriot on this list today. Text your answer to 536. 536 message and data rates may apply. Text help if you need it. Visit Nesson.com backslash terms if you want to read the legal stuff. A tough top of the third inning for the Red Sox, who now trail six to nothing to the Baltimore Orioles as the Orioles. Gets six off Clay Buckholz. You know, Jerry actually took a selfie with George Washington in the White House. Did you know that? I did not know yes, that. Yes, I did. I did when we were in the White House for the celebration for the World Championship. Yeah. About a, what, a month ago? And you didn't get in trouble for your selfie, did you? No, I didn't. No. Somebody else did, but I didn't. <laughs> David Ross. Heading out of the eight spot for the Red Sox. Jackie Bradley Jr., then Brock Holt. Near the bottom of the third inning, work to do for the Red Sox, who now trail six to nothing. Ross takes ball one. 222 average for David coming in. Starts the day game after the night game. Pierzynski caught the late night game here last night. Long wait for Wei in Chen. He doesn't mind. He's Team puts together six runs for him in the top half of this inning. Little dribbler that will stay foul. Ross leads it off, then Jackie Bradley Jr. and Brock Holt. Fortieth pitch for Chen, and it's a swing and a miss. Ross strikes out. Third strikeout for Chen, and there's one out here in the third inning. And he looks much sharper in the game today than he did the first time he faced the Red Sox down in Baltimore. Uh, that's the curveball from Chen right there to pick up the strikeout against David Ross. So uh, three strikeouts in the last two innings. The way in Chen. One down for Jackie Bradley Jr. batting out of the number nine spot. 
And looking at strike one. Fooled on that, and it's 0 and 2. Once again, the breaking ball from Chen, this time keeping it away from Bradley Jr. And gets the swing and miss. Bradley's appeared in all three outfield positions this season already. Today, getting another start in center field where he has seen the bulk of his time. 13th start in center field for Bradley. And on the outside corner for strike three. Back to back case. In fact, that's three in a row. For Wei and Chen, two down. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. You know, breaking balls early in the count for strikes, and then pick up that outside corner with the fastball. Very tough. Uh, as a guessing game up there for Jackie Bradley Jr. Is he going to stay with the breaking ball? Is he going to go with the fastball? Not only does he go with the fastball, but he goes into a nasty spot with it on the outside part of the plate. Two down here in the third inning. Brock Holt, the batter, bounced out to second base in the first inning. Strike now to Holt with Pedroia waiting on deck. Get a little Sox culture on Brock Holt. Lone Survivor favorite movie. New Girl and Breaking Bad favorite shows. That's a good steak. Denzel Washington on his list as this one is grounded foul into the Red Sox dugout. Not just one, but he's got uh, Mark Wahlberg and he's got Matt Damon, a couple local favorites. Next in is his favorite actors. Can't argue with much of that. I no. really can't. Uh, One, two, fouled off to the left from the top deck here. So, Mark Wahlberg, I like Donnie Wahlberg in uh, Blue Bloods. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite TV shows is coming on actually tonight. What do you got? Well, the voice starts it off uh, for two hours. Big night at the Remy House. This is down to first as Davis is flipping to the pitcher in time for the out of one, two, three innings, six nothing O's. Pro free checking in a dust free home. Another neat idea from Eastern Bank. We're here. Your first details at easternbank.com slash clean. Fourth inning, six nothing Baltimore as we check back in with Gary. So, guys, we know there was a little bit of a sleepover here at Fenway, but not all the players stayed the night in the comfy confines of America's most beloved park. Talk to Johnny Gomes and uh, 
after last night's win, I asked him, you know, what time was he finally able to go to bed? And he says, listen, there's a big thing, big difference between getting home and finally going to bed, especially after a win like last night. You have to get home around midnight, and then, of course, you have to sort of wind down. He kind of likened it to skydiving. You know, you don't just jump out of a plane, land on ground, and then, you know, go have a casual lunch. You kind of have to wind down chill out a little bit and then finally get to bed he said he was at the park around 7 30 8 o'clock so most of the players only got about six hours of sleep if that okay, that's always tough I mean, you know i think uh, guys on a nightly basis have that you play the night game then you get home and it's gonna take you a little while to wind down a baseball player is usually a train for night games you know mm -hmm. and they, they those get over sometimes 10 10 30 down the line and a fair ball right over the bag and it kicks out off the boxes Nava picks it up. Single here to begin things. Lombardozzi who got it started last inning has got another hit. Yeah, second hit of the day. Two for two for Lombardozzi. He came into the game at 276. That'll rise. As he goes right down the first baseline between the line and Mike Napoli. Ball bouncing off the stands and that's why uh, Lombardozzi has to remain at first base. Yeah, but your baseball clock is, is really toward night games and uh, you're right you know when, when you get home it's just like you get home and you go right to bed and you, you got that game going through your mind and it's tough to, tough to wind down after a while it takes it takes a while and day games become very difficult even one o'clock starts become very difficult because you're not accustomed to uh, to playing many day games 11 o'clock's in a whole different league you played in a number of these. I mean, do you ever get used to that 11 a.m.? No. It's, it stands out. No, you don't. And especially after last night playing mm -hmm. a, a night game, you know, uh, that that very seldom happens. Usually you play a Sunday afternoon game, and then you have the uh, Monday morning game. But last night ESPN taking the game, and it was a 7 o'clock start. That was a little bit of a break, but still, it's a very quick turnaround. The center field at Jackie Bradley Jr. out there makes the catch. Bill of the cap high. For the first out here of the fourth inning. I'll remind you to bring the family out to the ballpark for one of our Sox Savers games this season. Select April and May dates provide the lowest prices of the season. With tickets starting at just $10 to get your Sox Saver game tickets, visit www.redsox.com slash tickets. A lot of families taking advantage of that today. A lot of kids at the ballpark. One out, one on. Top of the order, Nick Marcakis coming up. First to throw to first, almost threw it away. But uh, Lombardozzi back to the bag safely. Well, Baden Hop's job right here is put some zeros on the scoreboard for a few innings and hope that the Red Sox uh, offense can click in a little bit, get back in the ball game. But uh, when you come in in long relief like this, you've got to put up some zeros and put them up right away. Okay, he's is grounded out to second base and single to drive in a run and scored a run. Now was able to get the 6-4-3 double play induced to end the third inning. And any further damage by the Orioles who scored six times on the benefit of seven hits in the third inning. Chasing Clay Buckholtz from this game. After just two and a third innings. Side for ball three as Badenhop falls behind here, three and one. Ball four, and he loses Marcakis. Second walk allowed by Red Sox pitching today. Well, fans, you can test your Red Sox IQ right now with the MLB Preplay mobile app. Download for free and start predicting every at bat of every Red Sox game all season. Compete one on one with other Red Sox fans for a chance to win the Preplay Triple Crown. 
two on one away here in the Baltimore fourth inning and here's Nelson Cruz. On an RBI single his last time up. Struck out back in the first inning. Pickoff play at second, no throw, but it has Lombardozzi diving back. Swing and a miss. And Cruz fooled there, and it's 0-2. Shoulder coming out a little bit too soon for Cruz on this particular swing here and the head pulling off the baseball, no contact. Shop towards third base. Holt will go to second for one on to first, and it is in time. Second double play in the last two innings for the Red Sox. We'll get a view when we come back. It's six-nothing Baltimore. Free checking from Eastern Bank, which has no minimum balance or monthly fees. It's why at Eastern Bank, here, you're first. Now back at Fenway Park, 6-0. Orioles have the lead over the Red Sox. We get ready for the bottom of the fourth inning. And another double play turned by the Red Sox to end the inning. Well, the Red Sox certainly needed it. A big high hop to uh, Holt there. He makes a nice throw just about where the second baseman likes it, about uh, eye high, and the Red Sox... Able to turn it over, get out of the inning. Dustin Pedroia leading it off here against Wei In Chen. Pedroia grounded to shortstop in the first inning. With four strikeouts through the first three innings. Second time through the Red Sox order. And delivers the strike over the corner. Three and one. Ah. 
Another strike this time on the other corner full count. They missed one earlier on the outside part of the plate that did not go be called a strike. He throws one in the same spot this time and it is called a strike. No ball four and Pedroia down to first base with a second walk given up by Chen today. Well, today Jerry decided to take a stroll through Canvas Alley, and this is where all the action takes place here during the playoffs and certainly during the season for the grounds crew where they are during the game. You were here early this morning to get that film. Yes. The well, batting cages are all set up, I noticed, too, with, even though they didn't take batting practice today. David Ortiz stands in on the left side. He walked in the first inning. And he lines it to right. Cruz is not going to get there in time. Cuts it off, though. And gets it back in quickly, holding Pedroia to second base on the single for David Ortiz and the first hit of the day for Boston. And this lefty doesn't give David Ortiz much of a challenge. David hitting 385 with a home run coming into the game. He has walked and now picks uh, this single up on a fastball away. Hooks it. And drops it in the right field for the base hit. How did you get here to take that uh, Don view this morning? I was here very early, Jerry, this morning. At six uh, o'clock. Yes, I think uh, six thirty-five. I believe is when I walked through Canvas Alley. Because yeah, I got here about uh, seven thirty, and they had already rolled all the batting practice stuff <laughs> off the field at that point. So it's kind of cloudy when I arrived here, but it is cleared off very nicely now. Yeah. Two on, nobody out. Mike Napoli coming up. Napoli takes strike one, the high strike. Going to be out of the strike zone. One and one to Mike Napoli with Pedroia at second base, Ortiz at first. Red Sox trying to chip away what is a six run deficit as they bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Not been able to do anything with Wei and Chen, then walk in a single here in the fourth inning. Trying to make something happen. Strike call, and it's one and two. One of the few changeups that Chen has uh, thrown so far in this game, and it's a good one. He keeps it down in the strike zone. Napoli just taking a look at it knee high. So two high fastballs, and then that uh, changeup down around the knees. Sixty pitches now for Wei and Chen. It's not recorded and out yet in the fourth inning. Ed Wallace, the pitching coach for the Orioles, former Red Sox pitching coach, looking on. Full count now. Now Gomes on deck. Napoli fouls it back. 90 mile an hour fastball from Chen. That's uh, that's when I think Mike would like to have back again. Count in his favor. He gets a fastball middle in and fouls it straight back. Oof. Could have very easily been a 6 3 ball game.
swing and a foul tip held on to for strike three as Clevenger able to hold on to it. It's the fifth strikeout for Chen in the first out of the fourth inning. Fastball up and away from Napoli after the uh, pitch down the middle and Napoli chasing one that's probably out of the strike zone. I'm eager insurance great service great coverage and a great price for auto home or life insurance. Two on one away and Johnny Gomes the batter he struck out swinging in the second inning. Line caught and they'll turn it into two as the shortstop flirt he'll tag the bag to end the inning. Promising start to the inning does not end well for the Red Sox who trail six nothing. Special day today from Fenway Park as we check out today's game summary, which is brought to you by Xfinity. Baltimore scoring six times on seven hits in the third inning, chasing Clay Buckholtz from this game after just two and two thirds innings, charged with all six runs on the seven hits. Wayne Chen is through his first four innings. Five strikeouts, couple walks, and just the one hit took the Red Sox into the fourth inning to get that hit as David Ortiz with a single, but uh, the inning ends on a double play, and we move on to the fifth inning. Burke made hop back on the mound for Boston. Chris Davis, Adam Jones, and Steve Clevenger to bat in the inning. Davis has been on twice today. A walk in the first and a single in the third as Baden hop misses for ball one. Red Sox shifting again as always on Davis. Baden Hop came in in the third inning. A double play in the third, got a double play in the fourth, and he's back out there to start the fifth without any action in John Farrell's bullpen. Ball four and a four pitch walk to Chris Davis to start the fifth inning. Well, today's suits are designed by Joseph Abood, custom made in the USA from fine Italian fabrics, now available at Men's Warehouse. There is Joseph taking in the game. Not happy with the way things are going so far today. Not happy with the way Jerry and I are dressed today, nor the score. Now 
Adam Jones bats with a runner in first and nobody out. Jones lined out to left in the first inning. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third, picked up an RBI, his ninth of the year. And move the center fielder Jackie Bradley Jr. over to right center for Jones to go the other way. Jones didn't like it as he spins out of the box, takes with him the first strikeout for Burke Badenhop. One down. Badenhop decides to go away with the fastball instead of inside with the head in the count 0 and 2. And a little pullback by David Ross will get the strike call against Adam Jones. So first out here, the fifth inning. Chris Davis still at first base. And here's Steve Clevenger, double to drive in a run. It's last time up. Hop throwing strikes now. He's ahead 0 2. They're going to talk it over now. Back and forth, Buckholz, or rather Baden Hop and Ross going back and forth. They wanted a fastball outside, fastball inside, both uh, shook off, and then he wanted the slider away. And then the conversation. A walk to Chris Davis to begin the inning. Adam Jones struck out looking, one on, one out. Like the changeup. Clevenger grounds it back to Baden. Hop his throw to second base for one. On to first for two. Third double play in the last three innings induced by Burke Baden. Hop. It's six nothing Baltimore halfway through this one. Of the fifth inning, but first, here's Gary Streisky. 
Yeah, Don, so we already talked about the shoes in terms of a fashion statement, but of course you've noticed the Boston jerseys that the team is wearing today, of course, introduced them last year, of course, after the marathon bombings, reintroduced them this year. Guys, it's going to be a tradition that's here to stay on Patriots Day, of course, Patriots Day, recognizing Paul Revere's ride way back in 1775, I believe it was. And uh, yeah, they're going to roll it out every single Patriots Day from here on out, have the Boston across the chest, guys. Of course, those jerseys are certainly a hit. It all wraps around Patriots Day and, of course, Marathon Monday. And big news, guys, in two hours, eight minutes, the first American to win the Boston Marathon. It's official. His name's Meb. I don't know the last name. I don't want to butcher it, but hats off to him. First time since 1983. Yeah, I was going to try to tackle his last name either, but uh, we know his first name is Meb. Congratulations as he wins the Boston Marathon today. Xander Bogarts leading it off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. There's strike one to Bogarts. Fly to left in the second inning. 0 for 1. Red Sox are 68 and 50 all time on Patriots Day. This one fouled off to the right out of play. Well, Nesson is looking for youth baseball and softball teams to be a live studio audience for our new Red Sox pregame show on select Sunday road games. Nesson Clubhouse, where kids run the show. Visit Nesson.com slash clubhouse sweepstakes to enter your son or daughter's team. The experience includes a pizza party before and a once in a lifetime opportunity to be an active part of the studio audience. Another foul off to the right for Bogarts. Red Sox have won 10 of their last 13 Patriots Day games dating back to 2001 and of course last year the walk off win Mike Napoli hitting the wall in left field to win it. Down and into Bogarts two and two and they've got some work to do this afternoon. Yes they do six nothing deficit. 70th pitch for Chen and it is just off the outside edge pitch he wanted and when he's missing today he's not missing by very much at all with that fastball that ball outside but uh, not by very much. Down low, and he loses Bogarts. Second straight inning. Went off with a walk, as that is the third walk given up by Chen. Pitching line brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. Four plus for Chen. Just the one hit is singled by David Ortiz in the fourth inning. Three walks, five Ks, and up to 71 pitches. As Daniel Nava now stands in for Boston. Well, Red Sox have had success against lefties this season. Boston five and one this year when facing a left-handed starter. The Yankees are also five and one. San Francisco five and four, tied for the most wins against left-handed pitching. We're trying to get something done here today against Wei In Chen. So used to Red Sox starters doing well and going deep into games. Boston's pitching starters have had quality starts in all but six of the team's first 19 games. But uh, not today. Clay Buckholtz tagged for six runs in two and a third innings, and Red Sox into the pen very early. Mark Bainhop's done a nice job, though, in quieting the Orioles' offense since coming in. Nava hits it on the ground left side deep shortstop Flaherty's throw to first will not be in time. 
Nava reaches with an infield hit, and the first two are on for Boston in the fifth inning. And once that ball got by Jonathan Scope, the third baseman, there really wasn't much at all Flaherty could do. He had no play at second base, and his only hope was to try a desperation play at first base. And uh, not even close over there as uh, Daniel Nava will beat it out. So the Red Sox get a couple of men on here as, as they did back in the fourth inning with nobody out. Two on, nobody out. David Ross coming up. Ross struck out swinging in the third inning. One of the five strikeouts Wei in Chen has today. One bid, and it is fouled back. Little test down there for uh, Jonathan Scope. Scope's made four errors on the season down at third base, and Ross trying to, you know, down by six runs, get some base runners. Ross has six hits on the year, and three have come with runners in scoring position. And trying to get something done here with Bogarts at second base. Nava at first, and 0-1. Down 0 and 2. Good change up by Chen. And jammed and fouled it off. Jackie Bradley Jr. batting out of the number nine spot in the Red Sox order on deck. Nobody out in the fifth inning. Bogarts at second, Nav at first. On the ground, back to the mound. Chen will go to second for one, on to first, and it's not in time. Ross able to beat it out of the back end. They do get Nava the middle man for the first out of the inning. Well, it looked like it might have been a double play, but good hustle by David Ross going down that first base line. Here's the one hop back to Chen. He makes that relay throw to second base. It's a little bit low, and that may have been the difference. By the time that glove comes from down to up to make the throw. Ross is able to hustle down and beat it out at first base. Nice to see him running hard down the line all the way to stay away from the double play. First and third, one down. Jackie Bradley Jr., the batter. And filled here, double play depth in the middle. But a turn one to end the inning. Bradley struck out looking in the third inning. Pops it up foul, off to the left out of play. Seventh game of 19 this year against Baltimore. Red Sox will not see the Orioles again until they go to Camden Yards in June. June 9th through the 11th. 80th pitch for Chen is outside. Sox hoping to get some of their injured players back. Uh, Shane Victorino on the 15 day DL since the end of March. The right hamstring strain scheduled to continue his rehab assignment with the Paw Sox, as is Will Middlebrooks. Now with the right calf strain scheduled to begin his rehab stint tonight for the Paw Sox. Swing and a miss. And Bradley is now even at two and two. Curveball less time from Chin and no contact by Bradley. Ooh. 
Bradley hits it to deep right field. Nelson Cruz going back. Going to be over his head and one hop up into the seats. Ground rule double for Jackie Bradley Jr. They will award the plate to Bogarts. And the Red Sox get on the board. It's now 6-1. to one. Yeah, Nice adjustment that time by Jackie Bradley Jr. Back-to-back -back curveballs. No contact on the first one. But certainly good solid contact on the second one. That ball stays uh, down and middle in. And Bradley able to put it up over the head of Nelson Cruz. One hop into the bullpen. That probably cost the Red Sox a run right there by bouncing into the stands. But they finally get on the board. Second and third with one out. Brock Holt the batter. Holt hold for two. He's grounded out to second base, grounded out to first. Just lunging after that, one and one. The slider this time from Chen. Again, probably off the outside edge, but a tough pitch for that left hander to stay off of. To center field. Adam Jones coming in to make the catch. Tagging at third is Ross. Throw is cut off, and the throw of the plate's not going to be in time. Coming across from first base was Davis to cut that ball off. He fires home. It's late. And the Red Sox gather their second run of the day. Sack fly for Brock Holt. Well, Holt continues to do the little things. That time getting the run home from third base with the uh, fly not that deep to center field. More of a line drive, but certainly deep enough to get David Ross home from third. And the Red Sox have cut it to four. Throw by Adam Jones coming in. One hop to the cutoff man at first base. And Ross scores easily. The second run of the inning. Two down here in the fifth inning. Jackie Bradley Jr. at second base. Now Dustin Pedroia. And it's lined down the left field line. A fair ball. Head toward the corner as Bradley Jr. comes around to score. Throw to second base is late. Pedroia drives in the Red Sox third run. Here come the Sox. Well, this inning started off with a walk. The fourth inning started off with a walk, but they couldn't do anything with it. This inning they do. They make it hurt. Pedroia right by the dive of Jonathan Scope. Right down that left field line or across comes Jackie Bradley Jr. And the Red Sox right back in this ball game. Action in the pen for the first time today for Baltimore. Right-hander Josh Stinson up. Dave Wallace headed out to talk to Wei in Chen. Three runs here in the bottom of the fifth inning so far. Walk a single, fielder's choice, a double by Jackie Bradley Jr. that drove in the Red Sox first run, a sack fly for Brock Holt. Scores David Ross, then the double by Pedroia down the line in left. Scores Jackie Bradley Jr. and the Red Sox have scored three times here quickly in the fifth. David Ortiz has walked in single, but on twice today.
Shift on here as they move Lombardozzi to the left or to the right of second base. They put Scope, the right fielder, in deep right. Yeah, almost in right field. <laughs> yeah. Big swing there, and it's one and one. Strike two. That's pretty nasty right there. It's uh, not much David Ortiz could do about that pitch. Fastball outside corner down knee high. Napoli on deck two down in the inning. Here's a one two pitch. In the dirt but Clevenger keeps it in front of him no advance. For Dustin Pedroia, who's got to go back to the bag at second. Nice block there by Clevenger behind the plate. Got a curveball and sliding to his left, able to knock it down and keep Pedroia at second. Pedroia gonna, not going to take any chances with two outs. He's already in scoring position. Full count. Ortiz lines off the glove at second base to Lombardozzi. Time to recover. And he throws out Ortiz to end the inning. But a productive inning for the Red Sox. They score three times. And it is six to three at the end of five from Fenway. Petroya driving in the third run.
All right, Tom, thanks very much. The Toyota Game Break was brought to you by buyatoyota.com, Toyota's official website for deals. Six threes, the Red Sox get three runs back in their half of the fifth inning. And Burke Badenhop is back on the mound for the sixth inning. Jonathan Scope leading it off. Grounded out to shortstop in the second. He singled to drive in a run as part of the six run third inning for the O's. It is time now for the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag Nesson fan photo for a chance to be shown in our broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Mike Anderson getting ready to run the marathon today. Going two to scope. And chopped out to short. Bogarts plays the high hop. Blows him out for the first down of the sixth inning. One down here in the sixth inning. Our pop ups today are about the marathon. Some marathon facts. Ryan Flaherty coming up with one down in the sixth inning. Flaherty's 0 for 2. He grounded back to the mound in the second, then tapped into one of three double plays. Routed into by the Orioles today. His went 6 4 3. Thirtieth pitch from Badenhop has done a terrific job. Red Sox to have action behind him though is left-handed Craig Breslow warming in the pen. Badenhop has been in since the third inning. Lombardozzi on deck. One out here in the Orioles' sixth inning. The Orioles have action of their own. Ryan Webb, a right hander, warming in the pen. 93 pitches from Wei In Chen. Red Sox finally getting to him for three runs in the fifth inning. Flaherty, a one hopper that exploded on Napoli. He will take it himself and tag the bag. Baden Hop was there, but Napoli wins the foot race ahead of Flaherty for the second out. That was a hot shot. Yeah, that's not an easy play at all for uh, Mike Napoli down at first base. This ball is hit on a line and just with some topspin explodes on Napoli. He has to actually jump to try to knock this ball down. I like the way he gets himself set. He, it's almost like a catcher. You know, he's a former catcher. And he's down in that crouch almost to get himself set at first base. He pops up and, and that time had to ha handle a very hard topspin line drive in his direction. Fifteen runners participated in the first Boston Marathon. It's grown a little bit. Six thousand <laughs> running today. Wow. Uh, two down here in the sixth inning. Steve Lombardozzi, two for two today. Single to center, single to right. Look out, no one thrown behind him. Swings of the 2-0 and fouls it back. Well, H.B. Hood salutes the Red Sox scholars presented by Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Each year, the Red Sox Foundation awards college scholarships to academically talented and financially challenged Boston middle schoolers. We thank donors such as H.B. Hood for funding these dreams of college. Fouled back again, evens at two and two. This was the previous foul ball, and that's an error. Mm. 
Oh, <laughs> throws his glasses down. He knows he blew it. Had it all lined up. Yeah. Very embarrassed. Probably just got done telling his lady there, too, that, you know, he was. Played a little ball in my time. Yeah, when I, I was in high school and college, <laughs> I could. I could they call me Mr. Pickett. <laughs> He's not going to get over it. <laughs> On the ground to first base. Napoli taking himself. This one an easier try in the end of the top of the sixth inning. Well, there was an error in the inning, but there was a one, two, three inning. Ball game, but when it comes to hunger at the office, you don't have to wait in line at the concession stand. WB Mason has an all star lineup of snacks and beverages that keep your break room stocked. Six to three, Baltimore on top of Boston as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. And a new pitcher on for Baltimore, Ryan Webb, into the game. His seventh appearance without a record, a 5.68 earned run average, five strikeouts to one walk, and Opponent sitting at 296 against Webb. Comes in for Wayne Chen. What the first five innings? Pitcher of record right now for the Orioles, giving up four hits, three runs. He walked three, struck out five, and gave up all three runs in the fifth inning. Mike Napoli leading it off here in the bottom of the sixth. Napoli has grounded into a fielder's choice and struck out. Into the shift on the left side of the infield for the O's. Kind of buckled them one and two. Ryan Webb, 28 years of age. First in the big leagues with the San Diego Padres, then in Florida for three years, and now for his first year with the O's. And he strikes out Napoli. Back to the slider again. Napoli chases for the first out of the sixth inning. Now that slider pretty nasty. Starts out in the middle of the plate and ends up on the off, off the outside edge. 
Napoli reaching for it, trying to protect the plate, but can't make contact. Six strikeouts for Orioles pitching. One down here in the sixth inning, and here's Johnny Gomes. Strikeout and lined into a double play and two at bats. Another strike, almost the same spot. 93 on the fastballs, 0 and 2. First pitch, second pitch. Right there. Tries to go with that same pitch that he got Napoli on, but uh, no swing that time by Johnny Gomes. Well, Ryan Webb was not ready for the return throw. From his catcher Steve Clevenger, I don't know what he was doing, but uh, he got hit with the return throw that bounces out to shortstop. He might have, he might have been looking the first base to see if uh, if they were going to call it a strike. Did he go? No. This is Paul Schreiber. Gomes strikes out. Let's take with him the second strikeout for Webb back to back case here in the sixth inning. Two down. A different slider this time. He comes inside. I mean, he had been going away against those right handers with the breaking ball, and it may have been a mistake on Webb's part to go inside, but still very effective. You get those hitters. Uh, Johnny Gomes watches Napoli. They see all those breaking balls of the outside part of the plate. You're thinking out over the plate, and all of a sudden he throws one inside. Corner to get you. Two down in the sixth inning for Xander Bogarts. And a swing and a miss for strike one. Bogarts has flied to left and walked. Got it started for the Red Sox in the fifth inning as he came around to score the Red Sox first run of the day. Year Webb held left is just a 2.44 average. Set career highs in games. Appeared in 66 games. This one fouled off the catcher Clevenger, and that hurt. That got him solid right off the shin guard. Want to relive the 2013 season of the World Series champion Boston Red Sox? Stick around post game and dining playbook and see it. At 3:30, special airing of Nesson's Band of Bearded Brothers will be sure to get you excited for this season. Right off that left knee, it looked like of Clevenger. Down he goes. In the dirt, full count. Webb upset with himself. Able to strike out Napoli, strikes out Gomes, and now full count to Xander Bogarts.
Bogart strikes on Webb, strikes out the side. We have played six, six three, Baltimore on top. With my guy Jared. Jared, uh, that one was just right there in the bread basket, man. Take me through it. So it was coming in really fast. It was like a really hot liner. That's it was it looked like a hot liner. The sun was coming over the, the center field there. It was kind of crazy. Uh, I kind of lost it in the sun a little bit. Uh, she said she wanted a foul ball, so I did everything I could to get it. And, uh, and it just slipped. You kind of, and then you kind of just saw it dribble down the net, and it was just one of those, no. And you just saw it happen all in slow mo. I, I couldn't hang out there and get it after that. Yeah, it was just, it was, it was a lost cause. Yeah, yeah. What inning are we in? Six, seven. So there's still opportunities. You're pretty much right in the avenue of catching another foul. I'll try again, but if I don't get one, someone's got to bring one up. Maybe even Nap can bring one up for you know. I'm gonna try to effort that for you. I will get you a baseball before this game's over with. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of excuses. <laughs> a lot of excuses. Yeah. <laughs> the sun was coming no, up. No, was awesome. He also said that it was a blistering line drive. Yeah, which blistering I, line drive. I don't know about that. The sun was coming up. The moon was out. <laughs> You can tell she really did not want to be on camera, too. I don't know if you noticed. No, like she wants really, no part of being around. No, seeing it all. We were kind of like the paparazzi there. Yeah. David Lowe leading it off and taking a pitch outside. New pitcher for the Red Sox, Craig Breslow, third of the day. Imagine giving, parents. Imagine, imagine giving a post-game interview on, on that to, to the media. <laughs> they tell you part the next day in the paper, you know. <laughs> I always found the best way to handle situations like that after a game was to say, no, I just messed it up. Yeah. And then what else can That's they ask easy. you? What, well, you what? could have said that you lost it in the sun and the moon. and uh, the, Yeah. And, it was a line drive. What do you the, want? Then the conversation goes on and on. If right. you just say, I messed it up. That's it. That's it. It's over. Bounding ball down to first. Napoli tags the bag for the first out of the inning. Well, he's ticket as the official Red Sox ticket partner has the best seats at the lowest prices to all the games at Fenway, all with a 200% guarantee. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1-800-MY-SEATS. Yeah, where are they going to go after you say, well, I just blew it? You know, I mean, they got nowhere to go. Else. So like, gotta, uh, if they ask you another question, they say, right. what do I say? I just said, I blew it. I blew it. I screwed that's it up. It. End of conversation. That's it. Yeah. Zach Britton warming for the O's with one out here in the seventh inning. Nick Markakis 
He's grounded out, singled and walked. Been aboard twice, scored a run, driven in a run. I know you have a different perspective on this now than probably when you played, but were you media friendly during your playing time? Um, were you a guy that they would go to to talk to after games? Uh, not really. It's taking a long time to right field as Nava is there. There are two outs in the inning. I think you got to remember, I mean, I played with a lot of guys that were in the Hall of Fame, so, right. you know, those guys got an awful lot of attention, but. You know, I was honest with him. I mean, if I if I mess one up, I messed it up. I mean, what, what are you going to do? You, you know, no, I, little, I mean, there were times there were excuses, but it be better off not using him because then it just goes on and on and on and on. So, I mean, this guy's here. He's got the moon. He's got the sun. He's got he's got people around him. He's got his girlfriend next to him. It embarrasses right. all hell. And, and, you know, and he's, he's got a thousand excuses. So this, this conversation in the clubhouse would still be going on. Now, I wondered because I know how quickly you get out of games now and how you quickly you've gotten out of the stadium now as a player. Yeah. Did you even shower or did you just drive no, home in no, your uniform? No, 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 I shower. <laughs> you did? Okay. Because <laughs> I can totally see you taking off. No, I'm not, an, I'm over, not a right? post-game guy. I, never have been. I, I never have been. I was not as a player. I felt like, you know, if I messed up and I had a bad day and we lost and all this stuff, it was better for me to get out of there. And, and uh, brew about it on the way home instead of hanging around the clubhouse and doing that. And then the next day, I was I was more open to being talked to, you know, by a coach or, or something like that than I was immediately following a bad game. So uh, I was kind of always like that, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel the same way about broadcasting. If you have a bad one, get out of here. If right. you have a good one, get out of here. And either way, just go, just get, get out. Yeah, and think about and think about it later, and then come back the next day and. You're all refreshed and ready to go for something, you know, brand new, brand all, all new. Swing and a miss here. There must have been something to be around after an 0 for 4. That was very pleasant. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. That was good. I was good. I was enjoying my wife had a dinner planned uh, for a Sunday afternoon game. I was 0 for 4 on Sunday. That was great. Many times that dinner was called off. Yes. Yeah. A little miss as Ross tried to frame it on the inside corner. Open stance for Nelson Cruz. Bats with two outs here in the seventh inning. And he'll head on down to first base. That is the third walk, fourth walk given up by Red Sox pitching today. I mean, you have to admit it, don't you, Don? I mean, you're driving home after a game, and you got a pretty good drive. And yep. I thought you go over the game, don't you, in your head? A yes. Bit sometimes, I mean, there are a lot yeah. of nights where you dream about the game over and over again, too. Yeah, I, I don't really that dream lot. about it, but I mean, you, you know, you have better nights than others. There's some yep. nights you go home and you go, "Geez, I wish I would have hit that." You know, I wish I would have hit that hit and run, or oh know, yeah, caught that suicide squeeze or something. You know, mm -hmm. it bothers you a little bit. Yeah. Davis grounds one into the shift, ranging over with a nice nifty play. Comes Brock Holt, third baseman, showing some range on the right side. We are at seventh inning stretch.
Nesson is brought to you by your Subaru dealers of New England, by Sullivan Tire and Auto Centers, your local Hounds dealer, and by Southwest Airlines. (laughs) 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 Our producer Jim Dodonna is here at 3 o'clock this morning because uh, we had a uh, you know, crew call because ESPN was here last night, so they had to yeah. redo the booth. And today has been very sketchy on the promos. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Your local. Your Hans local Hans dealer. dealer. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it says. Your yeah. local Hans dealer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I knew that was wrong. Yeah. There's something wrong about that, but then, you know, I figured. Somewhere it would. Uh, that's one of those things you think about on the way home. Today. Right. And see, that's going to bother me tonight. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> so we move along to the bottom of the seventh inning. Good to see our friend Heidi Watney in the house here at the ballpark today. Of course, with MLB Network now, just taking the game in this afternoon, off today. So we play along to the bottom of the seventh inning and a new pitcher on for the Orioles. As Zach Britton becomes the third arm used today for Buck Showalter, his eighth appearance of the year. 2 0 has not given up a run in 12 and a third inning so far. Nine strikeouts, four walks, and opponents hitting at 163. Review our Scion poll and what's going on, George. Well, we got Tom Brady. Yeah, I agree with that. Yes, <laughs> I agree with that. There's the selfie, Jerry. We were talking about before. I took in the White House with George Washington. You look mean in that selfie. Yeah, you? I know. I look like I'm in pain. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. There. I was very comfortable. It's just that uh, I was trying to get me in the shot with George, and I tried like three times. This was like the fourth attempt to get a selfie with George Washington. Uh, I really wasn't concentrating on my own facial expressions. It's a nice shot, though, when you think yeah. about it. You know, when you look, well, when it, not everybody has a selfie with George Washington. No. No. Daniel Nava leading it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Now the struck out in the second. He singled in the fifth inning. One of four Boston hits on the day. Joins Jackie Bradley Jr., Dustin Pedroia, David Ortiz. And a fly ball to right field. Nelson Cruz is out there. And he makes the catch for the first out of the seventh inning. You like pitches. You take a lot of pitches. Oh, I tweet a lot of pictures. Yeah, you do. You really do. And uh, I got two pitches in my phone. I got the one of the Yankee Stadium, and I have one of Mike Narachi. I don't know why I have one of Mike Narachi. Was that in the booth in New York when we were waiting to travel? Yes, on Sunday. On Sunday from Yankee Stadium, yes. One out in the seventh inning for David Ross. He was 0 for 2. He struck out, reached on a fielder's choice, and scored. We go lots of different places across the country. Really should be taking more pictures. I'm not really into it. I'm not into it. I've been going to these same places since like 1975, and I'm, you know, I'm seen pretty much seen it all. I don't really need to see it in a picture. Mm-hmm. So Maybe why you only have two pictures in your phone then? So I'm fouled off to the right. I mean, like, you could take a picture of today. I mean, this is picture perfect here at Fenway Park. It doesn't get better than this. It's beautiful, but I've seen this many times. Right, but then you could tweet it. Your view from the booth or... I don't want to. You're not interested in that. No, I don't want to. Pretty soon they'll be asking me to do all the stuff that you do, you know. (laughs) The one one misses for ball two. Tweeting out breakfast and (laughs) tweeting out what you're making for dinner and (laughs) Don's view and all that stuff and... Quite frankly, I have no interest in doing that. (laughs) Ross sits it high and deep to left field. David Lowe back looking up, and that ball is gone. Into the monster seats. David Ross. All right. With his first home run of the year. And it's now 6-4. to
First run allowed by Zach Britton this season, and it's a home run for David Ross. Yeah, we'll see if the Red Sox can take advantage of the bullpen. They got back in the ball game last night, ended up winning it. David Ross makes it now a two-run ball game, and still plenty of time left for the Red Sox. Little doubt when this left the bat that it was going to be out of the ballpark, especially the way the breeze is blowing today. Slight breeze out toward that left field wall. Now a ground ball to shortstop off the bat of Jackie Bradley Jr. and he is out number two of the inning. Ryan Flaherty threw him out. Two outs here in the seventh and it's back up top for Brock Holt. Well, David Ross connecting for one here a solo shot in the seventh inning. Brock Holt 0 for 2 today with a sacrifice fly back in the fifth inning. Buck Schalter back on the phone again. Nobody warming yet in the bullpen, but it looks like somebody's about to be. Some stirring going on in the Orioles' pen. It's that time of game. You start to see Darren O'Day, Zach Britton, and there is O'Day who's about to start warming up. Uh, so a lot of these guys in the game last night. And of course, uh, you mentioned the quick turnaround for today's game. Maybe a little fatigue set in. Who knows? For ball two, two and one. Wayne Chen started this game today for Baltimore. Still the pitcher of record as he went five innings, giving up three runs on four hits. Came in with a record of two and one. I am at 92 miles an hour, two and two. Sinking fastball this time from uh, Britain out of the strike zone, but Holt chasing it. Line just over the outstretched glove of Jonathan Scope and into left field. First hit of the day for Brock Holt comes with two down here in the seventh inning. Okay, he's had a nice day from the leadoff spot. He was 0 for 2, but then a sacrifice fly in the fifth inning when the Red Sox got three runs. Keeps things going here in the seventh inning now that they trail by two. That's right off the top of the glove of uh, Jonathan Scope at third base. Looks like one that maybe he could have handled, but fortunately for Holt, he does not, and the Red Sox get Pedroia to the plate. No two down Holt at first base for every Red Sox game it goes into extra innings or the Sox get a save CVS pharmacy will make a donation to Boston Children's Hospital towards a twenty five thousand dollar donation once again this season CVS pharmacy is the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox two down Brock Holt at first base held on by Chris Davis and the pitch will miss for ball one. Roya has grounded out, walked in, doubled, driven in a run. Yesterday the Orioles had the five nothing lead couldn't hold on to it today a six nothing lead and the Red Sox have put together four runs tying run at the plate right now two outs in the seventh inning and Pedroia looks at ball three. Terrific numbers against Zach Britton. Takes all the way and takes ball four. A four pitch walk that has Pedroia down to first base. Holt to second base and David Ortiz coming up. They've 
Wallace, the pitching coach, coming out. I want to remind you to catch the Red Sox report tomorrow at 5.30. See the behind-the-scenes planning and lead-up to the 2013 World Series ring presentation and the 2014 home opener. From the creation of the rings in Montreal to the ceremony rehearsals at Fenway and even a trip to the White House. Don't miss the Red Sox report. Opening day, 5.30 and Wednesday at 2.30. Two on with two outs here in the seventh inning. A run already in. And the home plate umpire Will Little out to break up the conference on the mound. Big Poppy getting ready. David has walked, singled, and grounded out. Fourth plate appearance coming up. Big one here in the seventh inning. Well, these are the opportunities you hope for when you drop behind early in a game, uh, six by six runs. These are the kind of situations that you hope to be getting into late in the game. Four for ten in his career against Britain, and that does include a home run. David was fooled on that curveball from Britain, and actually that could have gone as a strike, a high strike, but not called. So the Chiefs has control 1 and 0. Into the exaggerated shift here with Scope in short right field. Now it drops in there first strike. Another breaking ball back to back. This one brought down about six inches and called a strike. Strike two. Grabs the outside corner. Looks like a good pitch on the outside part of the plate. Straightens up the fastball at 95. On the ground into the shift. Scope and Rice throws to first for the out that ends the inning. Red Sox get closer on a solo shot by David Ross. It's six to four, Baltimore. going to take care of him but uh, the Red Sox have taken care of this gentleman who misplayed a ball earlier charged with an error he has a baseball now Gary Streisky make sure it happened make sure you hold on to the baseball where, where does lady go she may have left him I 
as we play along here to the eighth inning and back on the mound for the Red Sox, Craig Breslow. <laughs> Breslow pitched the seventh inning, did walk a batter, but went through the inning pretty quietly, and he's going to deal with Adam Jones to begin things here in the eighth. Jones, Clevenger, and Scope featured in the eighth inning. Line to left, and this is going to quickly get to the wall. Johnny Gomes plays it quickly and holds Jones to a single. That's so sharply and a good play by Gomes out there. Jones with a leadoff single, his first hit of the day. That gives him now a five-game hitting streak as he picks on that first slider right there. It looks like from uh, from Breslow and rifles it down that left field line for the long single. Gomes getting over quickly to get that ball back in and hold Jones to first base. Now Steve Clevenger. Clevenger doubled back in the third inning, part of the six run third. Of the, in that inning, the Orioles scored all of their runs. And all charged to the Boston starter today, Clay Buckles. Two and a third, six runs, uh, and seven hits. 1 0 on the ground a second could be two. Pedroia shuffles it to second for one on to first off the mark and safe at first is Clevenger. Tough feed that time from Pedroia to Bogarts. Yeah, that kind of got messed up right from the beginning, didn't it? Uh, Dustin gets that high ground ball and then it's almost like he couldn't get the proper grip on the baseball he wanted to make that feed to second base and almost pushes it over in that direction and Bogarts. That throws way off the mark at first base, and there was really not much pressure on Bogarts right there. He just comes stepping off the bag, and the sidearm delivery goes away at first base. One out, one on, and Jonathan scoped the batter. Array or awry? Awry. Awry, I thought so. Yeah. Array, awry. I knew what you meant. Scope is single back in the third inning, drove in a run. Now fouls it straight back. Well, follow every Red Sox game with your MLB.com at bat on your phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download from the App Store or visit RedSox.com today. He might be watching the game on his phone right now. Fly ball center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. drifting back, still going onto the dirt of the track to make the catch over the shoulder and then fires towards second base and it will be not in time. Good bid by Pedroia to pick it and try to apply the tag on Clevenger. You know, Jackie Bradley had to do that all over again. He probably would not have drifted after that ball, got back there maybe in a, in a, in a, you know, kind of a sprint and have momentum coming a little bit toward home plate instead of back toward the wall. And that might have prevented the runner from going to second base. Once a runner sees that, that's when he goes back and tags up and goes to second base because you know, he knows there's little chance he's going to be thrown out. The ball's hit deep. I mean, Jackie knew he had that right from the beginning and just kind of glided after it and I think that that helped Clevenger tag up from first uh, to get in a scoring position to down Clevenger at second base and Ryan Flaherty the batter ah. Flaherty 0 for 3 today he's grounded out three times And is down 0 and 2. Last of the eighth will feature Napoli, Gomes, and Bogarts, the anticipated trio for Boston. 
There no day has been warming in the Baltimore pen and continues to do so. Flaherty reaches out and gets a base hit to center field. Clevenger being waved around. The throw is off the mark. Run scores, throw to second, and Flaherty will be out there. But an RBI single for Ryan Flaherty has given the Orioles another run. They lead it 7 to 4. President's presented by E Insurance. DC and Wake will preview Buckles, analysts, and Yankees preview. How'd that go? Not well. No. <laughs> I didn't have time to pre read it. <laughs> Sorry about that. As we play along to the bottom of the eighth inning, new pitcher on for the Orioles, and it is their fourth of the day. As Darren O'Day comes into the game, his eighth appearance, not giving up a run at six and two thirds innings. Four strikeouts, three walks, and opponents hitting at 217. Day had been warming up last inning, comes in here for the eighth. Orioles get a big run in the top half of the eighth inning, knocked in by Ryan Flaherty to add to their total. So O'Day is in for Zach Britton, who ended up working the seventh inning, giving up the home run to David Ross. And getting out of the two outs, two on situation by getting David Ortiz to ground into the shift. Napoli leading it off. Then Gomes and Bogarts expected in the inning. Looks like Gomes is going to be hit for. Mike Carp has come out on deck. In there for a strike, and it's one and one. Andrew Miller is up in the Boston pen after two innings from Craig Breslow. Don Farrell having to piece this game together. He started with Clay Buckholtz lasting just two and a third innings today. In the air to deep left center field. Ball is back, and that ball is gone. Mike Napoli gets his fourth home run of the year, and the Red Sox get a little closer again. It's now 7 to 5, Baltimore. Well, the Red Sox showing some life, not quitting in this ball game today. Continue to fight back and fight back. Two run ball game with uh, nobody out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Is that submarine style delivery rising in Napoli? Rises it right over the uh, left field wall. Yeah. 
Well, Mike Carr pinch hitting for Johnny Gomes here in the eighth. Gomes had been 0 for 3 today. Two strikeouts lined into a double play. As Carp takes ball one. Outside 2 and 0. Two for five in his career against O'Day, and that does include a home run. <laughs> Brian Mattis now up in the pen for the Orioles. Day. Another guy who worked last night going a third of an inning and is in there today as he gets a strike over three and one. Carp fouls it straight back and it's a full count now. Bench hitting here in the eighth inning. Xander Bogarts in behind him and on deck. Kind of get jammed and fouls it back. Point in this game, the Red Sox trailed six to nothing. It was at the end of two and a half innings. It's now seven to five. They get three in the fifth, one in the seventh, one so far here in the eighth. Car pits it on the ground to short. Ryan Flaherty picks and throws. First out of the eighth inning. Well, fans, make sure you never miss another Red Sox game. Download the Red Sox schedule now by visiting Nesson.com slash schedule to import the 2014 schedule directly into your favorite desktop, web, or mobile calendar program. One out in the eighth inning, and Xander Bogart's coming up. Bogart says flight out, walked and scored, and struck out. Runs inside one and one. Mattis has now been joined by the Orioles closer Tommy Hunter starting to warm up in the pen. He just started. Bogarts asks for time and backs out. O'Day taking a lot of time to figure out what he wants to throw. Through the left side into left field, a base hit for Xander Bogarts. Low plays it, and Bogarts aboard with his first hit of the day with one out here in the eighth inning. Uh, Bogarts uh, now extends his hitting streak to five games as he turns around an inside fastball. He sees that ball running back in, almost rising, but the quick hands of uh, Xander Bogarts gets it by scope at third base for the base hit. Tying run coming to the plate here in Daniel Nava. Both of his home runs have come from the left side as he stands in on the left side. One for three today. Single in the fifth inning.
ahead 2 and 0 oh, staying away from Nava. That's a strike as stays out there but grabs the corner. Uh, pretty nasty strike, too, by uh, O'Day as he drops down to the side and picks up the outside corner with the breaking ball. Certainly not a pitch that Nava wants on a 2 0 count. Sox with double barreled action in the pen. Andrew Miller has been warming up and now joined by Koji Uihara. Runner goes, Nava swings, grounds it off the pitcher, it kicks out to short. Flaherty's got no play, and everybody's safe. Now the Red Sox applying a little pressure with uh, Bogans off at first base. The shot right back through the middle and knocked down by O'Day, but then it deflects out to a vacant shortstop. And by the time Flaherty gets there, there is no place to go with it. I don't know if the hit and run play was put on there. It's possible, but it would seem unlikely with Nava at the plate. But everything works out well for the Red Sox regardless. Another pinch hitter coming up here in lieu of David Ross. Jonathan Herrera will pinch hit. Ross today had homered in his last at bat in the seventh inning, but it's going to be Herrera who bats here. Darren O'Day has given up three hits in this inning. He's recorded one out. And Buck Schalter's coming out to make the change here. Herrera introduced, and he wanted to make sure of that as he pointed towards home plate umpire Will Little. And he will now make the move. Brian Mattis will be coming in. We'll step aside at 7 5 Baltimore. Red Sox making noise. Federal Credit Union Tuesday at 6:30. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? 
Well, the Yankees will be rolling into town for the first of three. Right now, the Orioles are here, and the Red Sox trying to catch up to them. Seven to five, Baltimore on top of Boston. Red Sox threatening with Brian Mattis coming into the game. His ninth appearance, one and one, with a 5.40 earned run average. Many walks and strikeouts, and opponents hitting at 333. Against the left, who comes in here, Jonathan Herrera coming up. It is Bogarts at second, Nav at first, one out. Tying runs on base for Boston here in the inning. A run already in on the Mike Napoli leadoff home run to open up this eighth inning. Herrera at 222. No homers, four runs batted in. Pinch hitting for David Ross. Brian Butterfield going through the signs. The strike evens are counted one and one. Seven runs, ten hits, no errors for Baltimore. Five runs, nine hits, no errors for Boston. Trail six nothing at one point in this contest. Well, you don't see it very often, and it's possible you could see a hit and run with men at first and second. It's very seldom used. But with a guy like Herrera at the plate, it's a possibility. Red Sox are running. He's swinging, but he fouls it off to the right. There you have it. Just had a feeling with Herrera pinch hitting that something was going to happen and he was just going to let him sit around and try to hit a three run home run. And there's the action. There's the motion with the uh, 2 1 count. Good count to hit and run in. You're pretty much going to get a strike, but fouled off. Away and it's a full count now. Now the question is will they send the runners with one out in the three two count banking on contact from Herrera. Bogarts at second Nava at first and the three two to Herrera. Fouled off to the right and they were running. There's a left hander on Jack on deck Jackie Bradley if there's a right hand they might not be running in this situation but with the lefty on deck I think that's why they had the men in motion on the three two count. Pickoff play at second and oh. took forever for the shortstop to get over that time in Flaherty. Yeah, and both. Mattis knew he had him moving. <laughs> both got stuck going a little bit too soon right there and that spin around move, but it, it fooled everybody. It fooled the shortstop, Flaherty. He just, you know, he's in position right there. Anticipating they're going to be running, but not anticipating that Bogats was going to get that big of a jump. Swing and a miss, and they're hung up. Bogarts did not go. Nava did. And now they will run him back and run him down. Turns into a double play. Red Sox run into it. He stopped about halfway to third base. The strikeout turns into a double play. 7 5 0s.
Men's Warehouse, T.C. Eck and Steve Lyons will be with you. Ellsbury returns MLB Network. That's tomorrow at 6 p.m. on Nesson. Well, somebody missed the sign, and I have a feeling it might be Bogarts at second base because you can see Bogarts start the run, then he stops after the strikeout, and Nava was on his way from first base. So I've got to believe it's Bogarts who probably missed that sign. They were running on the 3-2 count. He stopped, got caught in that run down, and a bad a double play to get him out of the ink. A little soft liner reeled in by Napoli to retire Lombardozzi for the first out of the ninth. Well, well, some changes defensively for the Red Sox. Mike Carpenter pinch hit stays in the game in left field. And after David Ross was hit for by Herrera, A.J. Przinsky caught last night now into the game. And so is the tall left-hander, Andrew Miller, 10th appearance of the year. 1-0, the 1.17 ERA. 9Ks, 4 walks, and opponents hitting at 154. David Lowe, the batter. One for three from the number nine spot today. Singled back in the third inning. Part of that six run inning for Baltimore. Craig Breslow went two innings today. Gave up two hits and a run. A run for the Orioles in the top of the eighth inning. Walked a batter, did not strike anybody out. Low lifts a pop up into shallow left. Xander Bogart's calling and catching the second out. So tune in to tonight's Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank tonight at 11 p.m. Leah and L have a full report from the Garden. Also catch up with two Emerson students as part of their Boston Strong T-shirt campaign. See what Know How can do. For Marcakis and it's 0 2. Fouled straight back, still 0 2. Popped up, shallow center, Bogart's out, in comes Jackie Bradley, and he is able to pick it basket style. Coming in from center, nicely done. Bradley Jr. lead it off, Holt and Pedroia.
On Patriots Day, and they're looking for more of the same today. Trailing 7-5 to five as they come to bat. We look back to Mark Loretta. Back April 17th of 2006, the walk-off home run for Boston. And, of course, last year, the double off the wall for Mike Napoli. We'll see what is in store for the Red Sox today. As Jackie Bradley Jr. leads it off here in the bottom of the ninth inning. One for three today. As he takes strike one from the closer for the O's, Tommy Hunter. Seventh appearance, 3.60 earned run average, four out of five in save opportunities. He's not walked anybody and struck out five. Runs it inside at 97, evens the count at one and one. On the ground to first base, Chris Davis has got it. He'll flip to Hunter for the first out of the inning. One down and brings up Brock Holt. He's grounded out twice at a sacrifice fly for his third RBI and singled in the seventh inning. Strike one. Madroy on deck, one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Holt pops it up, foul ground. Back comes Clevenger, but he won't have a play. Holt's been bothered by something in his right eye. The only blown save opportunity for Hunter on the year was against Toronto. Three for three before blowing the save to the Blue Jays. Now the opening day save against Boston. Is one two. Just away and it's two and two. Full count now. <laughs> Chopped up over the mound towards second. Lombardozzi's throw is off the mark and goes off the front of the Red Sox dugout, but reaching is Brock Holt. Rock Hole had to get back to that bag because he made a little turn towards second base. Here's the errant throw, as you can see right here. Now watch Holt make a step towards second base. They had to come back and they tried to tag him, but he just reached to get back on the bag. There's that move towards second. Now you got to get back to that first base bag or you can be tagged out. They rule it a base hit for Brock Holt. There's a board here with one out of the ninth, his second hit of the day. Now Dustin Pedroia representing the tying run, batting with one out in the ninth. Takes strike one. 95 on the fastball from Tommy Hunter.
Pedroia hits it in the air to deep left field. Back goes low at the wall. It is high off the wall. Brock Holt racing around to third. It's a wall ball double for Pedroia. Second and third with one out of the ninth. Second double for Pedroia of the afternoon. Drove in a run back in the fifth inning with a double. Then a walk in the seventh, and now a wall ball double to put the potential tying run in scoring position. That was a high, flat cutter, it looked like. And Pedroia all over it, not missing a home run by that much. Second and third, one out. Big Poppy coming up. Let's see if they walk Ortiz to put the potential winning run at first base. I think they are. I think they are going to walk him, Don, and take their chances with Napoli. Three career home runs for David Ortiz against Tommy Hunter. Buck Showalter's decided he's not going to let David Ortiz beat him. And it's something you don't see very often, you know, put on the winning run. The winning run. Going to take his chances on Mike Napoli, who's already homer today. And Mike Napoli, who had the walk off double here. On Patriots Day last season. Up off the wall. We're gonna get another chance here. Last season, Mike Napoli grabbing some wall in left center field. Was against the Tampa Bay Rays. It scored Pedroya. Now Napoli batting with the bases loaded one out in the ninth inning. Three for 11 in his career against Tommy Hunter. Ball one. Career 333 hitter in this spot, six grand slams on his resume. One for two this year with the bases loaded. Seventeen pitches so far for Tommy Hunter, seven for strikes. The strike call on a pitch that appeared to be inside. If Napoli swings at that pitch, he jams himself. <laughs> away. Two and one. Two pitches away from Napoli, one inside the Napoli. The count really should be three and zero. Oh. Napoli calls time, backs out. One point, the Red Sox trailed in this game, six to nothing. As the catcher Clevenger heads out to talk to Hunter. Buckland, but it's high. Three and one. Oh, what a spot for Napoli now. Three one count. Bases loaded. Game on the line.
And again, Clevenger, the catcher going out. They do not want to make a mistake here, and they're going to get on the same page. It'd be tough to watch if you're Buck Showalter. You had a 5 0 lead last night, you lose. Had a 6 0 lead today. And right now, the Red Sox have the bases loaded with one out in the ninth inning. Napoli chops it right side. Lombardozzi is going to go to first. A run will score, and it's a one run game. Two down in the ninth. Napoli retired four to three. Picks up an RBI as Holt scores. Toward the end of the bat for Napoli, a little squib to that uh, right side of the infield. The ground covered like Lombardozzi. Ortiz at second base, Pedroia at third. Ortiz becomes a potential winning run. I wonder if we'll see a pinch runner for Ortiz at second base. Mike Carp three for seven against Hunter in his career. It's up to him. And he'll take strike one right at the top of the strike zone. Fouls it straight back and it's 0 and 2. Couple of fastballs challenge time from Hunter. Last fastball at 93 miles an hour. The 0 2 pitch. Back with the curveball after back to back fastballs and could not get the outside edge. Carp grounds it down the first baseline. It's a fair ball, and Davis will tag the bag, and the Orioles hang on. Tommy Hunter able to save it. The Red Sox get a run in the ninth inning, but it is not enough. As the Orioles win this one seven to six at Fenway Park and the Red Sox unable to tie it up in the ninth inning. Well, a valiant comeback effort today. Tom Karen for the Red Sox, but they come up just a little bit short.